Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some simple and fun circuits that you could build so you could get some experience in breadboarding and circuit design. Now, the first circuit that we're going to look at that's on my breadboard is a logical OR gate function circuit. And I'm using two phototransistors as the inputs. So this is my first phototransistor, and this is my second phototransistor. So those are the two inputs to the logical OR gate. Now, right now, ambient light is falling on both of the phototransistors. So if I block one of the phototransistors, that's like inputting a logical one into the OR gate. So if I block out the first one, I get an output. And if I block the second one, I get an output. So blocking the first one or blocking the second one gets an output. Or if I block both of them, I also get an output. Now we can reconfigure those phototransistors. We can wire them up differently so we could get a logical AND gate function. Okay, I've reconfigured my phototransistors, so now my circuit is a logical AND gate function. So if I cover up my first input, it's a logical one input, I get no output. If I cover up my second input, I don't get any output. But if I cover up both inputs, I get an output. So if I block the first AND the second phototransistor, I get an output. So it's a little fun circuit you could build. It's a good learning tool. You could teach somebody the difference between a logical OR and a logical AND function. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my OR function circuit and my AND function circuit using phototransistors. If we look at the first circuit, that's the OR function circuit. I have two phototransistors in series. So when the light is falling on both of the transistors, they're both turned on. So we're getting a voltage of the gate of this MOSFET transistor, and the MOSFET will turn on. Now when the MOSFET is on, it's going to shunt away current from the LED, so the LED will be off. Now if we block one of the transistors, phototransistors, we'll lose our gate voltage to the MOSFET, and the MOSFET will turn off, which will enable the LED to come on. So if we block one of the, one of the phototransistors or the other phototransistor, we'll actually block the voltage to the gate, which will enable the LED to come on. So that will give you your OR function. Now on the AND function circuit, we have two phototransistors in parallel. So when the light is hitting both of them, they're both on. So we're getting a voltage on the gate of the, of the MOSFET, which is taking away the current from the LED, so the LED is off. Now if we block one of them, we're still going to get voltage through the other one to the gate, which will, which will turn on the MOSFET and, and shunt away the LED current and, and keep the LED off. But if we, both, if we block both of them, then we'll, we'll lose our gate voltage uh, uh, the MOSFET will turn off and we'll get current drive to the LED which, which will turn on the LED. So that's our AND function. So that's two little simple circuits you could build to have an OR function or an AND function using phototransistors. Okay, here's my next little simple circuit that you could build. Now you can see on my breadboard I have an LED. It's a standard LED. It's on solid. But if I take a flashing LED and apply it to the circuit, install it right here, Now we have a little alternate flashing LED circuit. So with two LEDs, one a flashing LED and a MOSFET, we can build ourselves a little alternate flashing LED circuit. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the alternate flashing LED circuit. Now it's a very simple circuit. If we look at the left, we can see the flashing LED. Now when it comes on, there'll be current flowing through the LED and through the 680 ohm resistor and we'll get a voltage drop across the resistor. Now that voltage will be fed into the gate of the transistor, the MOSFET transistor, which will turn it on. Now that will ground this point, which will take away current from the LED and keep the LED off. So while the flashing LED is on, the standard LED will be off. Now when the flashing LED turns off, there will be no current flowing through the series circuit, there will be no voltage drop across the resistor, and the transistor will be off. Now when the transistor is off, it will enable current now to flow through the 470 ohm resistor to the LED and light up the LED. So as the flashing LED is flashing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to alternate between the two LEDs. So it's a very simple circuit, easy to understand, and easy to breadboard. Okay, here's my next little circuit. Now this is an electronic combination lock. It has an 8-dip switch array where you enter the combination number from 1 to 8. And you can get different types of dip switches, like this one here. This is a rocker type. Or you can use a switch type like I have on the breadboard. Now when you enter the right combination, into the dip switch, this LED will come on. So this LED could be a solenoid for a door lock or an enable pin in, in a circuit. 
So if I enter the right combination, on this one it's 147, so I push in 147, the LED comes on. Now any other combination, if I do, do any other switch, will actually disable uh, the LED. So you can use this for a, actually a door lock or for a special function on your circuit board where only a few people can get access to the function who, who know the right combination. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the electronic combination lock. And you can see the eight dip switches and the MOSFET transistor, which is driving the LED, which indicates an unlock condition. Now I've colored in switch number one and switch number four and switch number seven to indicate the three switches which need to be closed to unlock the lock. Now if you look at the top, you can see we have five volts feeding a 3.3K ohm resistor, which is in series with switch number one, which is in series with switch number four, and that's in series with switch number seven, which is connected to the gate of the MOSFET. So if switch number one, four, and seven are all closed, then we get a voltage into the gate of the MOSFET, which will turn on the MOSFET and turn on the LED, which will unlock the lock. Now on the rest of the switches, on the left-hand side, they're all connected to the ground, and on the right-hand side, they're all connected to the gate of the MOSFET. So if any other switch is closed, it will actually short out the gate voltage to the MOSFET and turn off the LED. So only when we have switch 1, 4, and 7 closed and all the rest open will we unlock the lock. So that's the circuit there, which you can breadboard pretty quickly. Okay, this is my last circuit. And this is the old familiar LED sequence circuit using the CD4017 decade counter, which has 10 outputs. Now I only have 8 outputs out of the 10 outputs hooked up because I didn't have enough LEDs. So you could add 2 more LEDs to this uh, sequence. Now I'm clocking the chip with a flashing LED, which you can see at the top left-hand corner. That's what's clocking the IC, which is sequencing the LEDs. So you could substitute this clock circuit for a 555 timer, so you could adjust the sequence rate to your liking. So this is a very easy circuit to build, so after you breadboard the circuit, you could customize it with your own variations. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the LED sequencer using the CD4017 decade counter IC. Now on my breadboard I only had eight, 8 LEDs, but on the circuit diagram here I included the 10, so you could build it with 10. And this is my clock circuitry. It's a flashing LED being buffered by a MOSFET transistor, and that's being clocked into pin 14. That's the clock input of the chip, which will clock the sequencer. But again, you could actually put a 555 timer in its place if you want, uh, so you could actually adjust the sequence speed. So that's the simplest circuit I can think of for a lead sequencer. So I hope this video gave you some ideas on how to build some of your own projects so you can get experienced with breadboarding and circuit design.